Charmin, we saw a troubling incident in the with the Uruguayans early in the tournament with one of their players getting whacked in the head. The doctor was trying oh, to right. keep him off the field. I thought you were going with the bite there. No, no, second, not yeah. the bite okay, deal. Right. And we saw it again yesterday yeah. with Argentina. Is I mean, right now in North America, the concussion issue has become a crisis. Sure. Is this something that FIFA needs to address, is going to well, address? Well, probably need to, yeah. They, but they is it even to. a conversation right now in, in football circles? Not so much, no. I mean, it's, 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 you hear it here, here and there, but generally speaking, no. It's very much a, an old boys club football these days, and they are behind the times in, in, that, in that, that area. I mean, we see it every, every week in the Premier League. You see a guy getting his bell rung, gets back up, shake it off, get back it's out brutal. there. And if you tell most athletes, though, you're in a World Cup semifinal. Like yesterday, we saw Mascherano mm-hmm. getting his, his bell That's rung. That's the one. Um, you're in a World Cup semifinal. Maybe the only one of your entire career. You know, are you going to stay down or are you going to get back up and well, get that, back out but there? The, the know, issue to me is it should not be on the player. Sure, sure. And it should be, I mean, like the old, the, the quiet room in hockey right now, for right. example, right? doesn't exist in soccer. Probably should, yeah, you're right. But they're, they're very backwards in that regard. And FIFA have enough issues in their plate right now, I guess, in, in their concerns to, to worry about this. They must be happy they have a South American team. They like to play with the ball at their feet. Messi's yes, got, <laughs> what, 39 successful dribbles, whatever that stat is. And, I mean, the, the, the contrasting styles uh. Sunday are, <laughs> it. I mean, they're polar opposites coming into this final, aren't they? Well, you think so, yeah. I mean, traditionally speaking, you know, Germany are the, the pragmatic, efficient, cliche German team. Argentina play the, the beautiful football. But in this World Cup, in recent years, Argentina's become very defensive. Mm. And they rely on that moment of brilliance by... Leo Messi, arguably the best player in the world, whereas Germany have been passing the ball around very well. In this World Cup, though, Germany haven't played that well up until the 7-1 game. And it's funny, it's a funny tournament so far because there hasn't been that one all-encompassing dominant performance outside Germany and Brazil, which was a freak result, let's be honest. Hasn't Netherlands been that one looked pretty good against Spain. Yeah, but that was one great half, though. That, that game, yeah, I mean, that's that was a, it's a strange game. That was, that was 45 minutes of Spain looking great, then one moment of brilliance from the Dutch, the Van Persie goal, mm-hmm. and then the Spanish fell apart. You know, it's a very strange game. The Dutch, I mean, listen, they uh, they were losing to Australia in one one match in the mm. second half, 2-1. They almost lost to Mexico right. in the last 16, you know, two goals in five minutes at the end of the game to, to progress. So it hasn't been one great performance uh, until Germany. So Argentina might be due that, but you're right, different styles. Um, will they see that moment for Messi? I mean, this is his moment, right? People... Obviously, respect this guy. They say he's one of the great players of all time. But the old argument is, has he got to win that World Cup to be considered the best player of all time? Well, here's your stage, Sunshine. Prove it to us. With Sportsnet's James Sharman. I like that Sunshine. If the Germans beat Brazil in a shootout, 2-1, 1-0, if it is what we expected... Sure. You know, a very tight game, completely competitive. Does it change your viewpoint on the matchup in the final? Does seven <laughs> one tilt things to Germany inevitably? No. Well, that's a great question because I don't know what that was from Germany. Well, I think it nobody was a great knows that, right? right? We, we think it was a great performance, but it was more an awful performance by Brazil. Right, seven one was a freak result. If they had grinded out a two one game against the host nation you know, and show great resolve and character. I'd put them as maybe bigger favorites in the final than that. That's interesting, yeah. yeah absolutely. I mean, you wonder, will there be that emotional letdown? You can't imagine that in, in a World Cup final, but it's just, a, it's been a really odd World Cup from the opening kickoff. And that match just personified it. What was it? Was yeah. it an all-world, you know, all-time performance or just uh, this result that we'll, we'll be talking about for, for generations? We talk a lot about matchups um, in North American, traditional North American sports, some teams match up better against others. Mm-hmm. And, and as often as not, more often than not, what we anticipate is a bad matchup for some team becomes a bad matchup. You know, we talked basketball with uh, Dwayne Casey a minute ago. Basketball is a perfect example. There are certain teams that don't match up well against other teams. Um, does that apply here? You know, I, I think in, in some cases you look at Germany and their weakness is at the back. You know, which you don't often say about Germany. They're very slow um, in defense. Now, Argentina, hardly uh, a swashbuckling side going forward, but they have Leo Messi, who is a quick, quick player and could really hurt that German defense. So from that standpoint, the matchup might favor Argentina. Hmm. Um, but from a player-by-player player standpoint, Germany is by far the better team in this final, but they haven't got that truly world-class game-breaker that Leo Messi is. 
There's only one of him, maybe two with Ronaldo. But yeah, matchups in, in soccer, it's not quite the same as hockey, I don't think, or in, in the NBA, certainly. It's no, I wouldn't think so. I, but but, but it, in this particular occasion, you know, you look at them on paper, well, Germany's a much better team, right? But then you look at that back line for Germany, and, and their best player at the back, Mats Hummels, has a knee injury. If he's out, it means this player, Per Medesaka, will go in. A big, huge, six foot, seven foot, typical German defender, slow as molasses. And you've got to think a Messi would be just salivating, salivating. So when you've got one great player like Messi is, um, we would all know this, and again, I'm going to try and make comparisons. Um, LeBron is playing. You're going to put your best defender on him, and you're going to do the best job you can to try and shut down LeBron. Sidney Crosby is playing. You're going to have somebody shadow Sidney Crosby. Does that happen? It in does, yeah. You have man marking. It's called man marking for sure. Now, so this is I mean, since Messi is by far the most dangerous player that Argentina has. Yeah. Are you prepared as a German side to essentially take greater chance? I, I guess philosophically say, if somebody else beats us, fine, sure. but we're not going to let Messi beat us. Yeah, absolutely. We saw in, in the Dutch game, they put three or four men on Messi, yeah. and they did a great job with him. But what that does often is, obviously, by putting two or three guys on one player, it affords other players space. Right of now, course. Up until this point, though, in this World Cup, Argentina haven't had that great performance by another player. It was going to be Angel Di Maria who's got a, an injury right now. Um, Gonzalo Higuain should have stepped up and, and found that extra space. It hasn't happened so far. But that's what happens. That's why Messi and the Ronaldos are so useful because even when they're not a factor in the game, they are a factor in the game because they're creating space for someone else. So I think that's going to be fascinating, whether they put man-marking on Messi, whether it's a systemized approach, you know, two or three guys in him. We're going to find out. You know, the Germans are very good defensively when, when they put their mind to it.